Hi, I'm Justin Pineda, and um, for today, we're going to discuss Module 4, which is um, cryptography. So this um, CBT version is already the summarized one. If um, you need further information, you can check the um, slides the complete slides available in the Google Drive. So for today, we're going to discuss two things. The first one is cryptographic concepts, and then the second one is um, the encryption algorithms. Okay, so let's go to some important terms in cryptography. So these are the technical terms that we'll be using for this module. So probably you would um, encounter um, these terms okay, um, and some the non-technical ones. So we start with plain text. So an, an, an encrypted message is called the plain text. Okay. Um, this is the, the actual message that you would like to send. And then the cipher text is the encrypted message. This means that um, when you mix the plain text with an algorithm, okay, it becomes encrypted and it can no longer be read um, by default. And cryptology is the science of secure communications. And then we have three types of encryption algorithms, which we will be um, discussing in detail later. The first one is symmetric encryption. It's an encryption algorithm that uses one key to encrypt and decrypt. And then we have asymmetric encryption which has two keys. Okay, the first key, you use it to encrypt, and the second one, you use to decrypt. And then the third one is the hash function. It's a one-way encryption using an algorithm and no key. And another feature of a hash is that you cannot decrypt a hash function. So, <clears throat> um, cryptography provides the following. So in in the first uh, lesson, we, um, we have discussed the, um, the, the three functions or features of um, information security, such as providing confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Um, and in cryptography, it provides uh, some of the functions and features okay? Um, such as confidentiality, it protects um, the information from or the, the message from information disclosure. It also provides integrity, which um, provides protection from modification. Okay. And then it also provides sub, um, sub features uh, such as identification, authentication, and um, non repetition because um, identification and, and authentication are um, sub-features of confidentiality, okay? while non-repudiation is a sub-feature of integrity. So um, identification is used to determine the origin of the message okay? because you, you may have um, a sender who would claim that um, he is person X, Okay, so that's the um, identification, and that person X needs to verify um, his or her identity, so that's authentication. And then we have non repetition it's when the sender cannot refute the message came from him or her. Um, and this is a very important feature of um, cryptography. Um, because it's easy to deny that the message came from me okay, when in fact it really came from me. So that um, non repetition then is a very important feature and usually it's used for um, collecting evidence and um, it being used in um, investigations. Okay, some um, other important terms are from um, Cloud Shannon. So um, we have diffusion, 
and confusion. So for diffusion, uh, it says that it's the order of the plain text should be diffuse or disperse in the ciphertext. So the, the, the bigger the space for distributing um, the, the, the parts of the plain text is better. So the bigger the space, the better. And then the second one is confusion, which means the relationship between the plain text and ciphertext should be as confused. Like this is also another term for random as possible. So <clears throat> um, the more random it is, then the better. So these are the combinations of a good um, cryptographic uh, algorithm. Okay, so, and then we also have cryptographic substitution, which replaces one character for another, which provides diffusion. And then permutation, which is also called transposition, which provides confusion by rearranging the characters of the plain text anagram style. Okay. So you have to remember the terms diffusion and confusion because these are the um, key criteria in um, judging that um, and the algorithm is strong or not. Okay, um, cryptographic strength. So strong encryption destroys uh, patterns. So patterns, these are actually the enemy of um, cryptography. Now, we have what we call work factor. It describes how long it will take to break a crypto system or the entire, um, entire algorithm altogether. Okay. It is to decrypt a ciphertext without a key. And some uh, operators are, um, yeah, some operators used in uh, cryptography, so it include the modulo or the modular math and we use the percent sign um, to do modulo it's also known as the remainder in division and the next one is XOR or exclusive or this is called the secret sauce in modern encryption later on we'll discuss why both of these are very important um, uh, op operations in cryptography. So um, let's now go to the second part, which is encryption algorithms. Okay, so um, these are the questions that are commonly asked in a cryptography class. So the first one is, is there an unbreakable encryption algorithm? And the second one is, which encryption algorithm is more secured? Although this is um, debatable, because there are two different schools of thought there. Um, <clears throat> a publicly known algorithm or an in-house or a private algorithm. Publicly known meaning the entire algorithm um, is available um, for viewing. Okay, so let's now answer the, the questions. So the first question, is there an unbreakable encryption algorithm? So the answer here is that it is possible that the algorithms may be cracked due to Moore's law or are supported by Moore's law. Okay, so you may have encountered Moore's law in your computer organization or your IT fundamentals class. <clears throat> Um, basically, um, what Moore's law says is that as time progresses, okay, the um, processing power progresses or becomes more powerful and the cost goes down. So if you're going to put it this way, it, it says that um, time okay, T goes up. Processing power goes up and the cost.
cost goes down. So it's inversely proportional. <clears throat> and we say that the enemy of um, your encryption algorithms is the processing power. Okay. So the, po the more powerful the processing power is, the easier for it to crack the, the algorithm. Okay. So this, uh, this means that the current encryption algorithms that we have right now will be cracked in the future. Okay, because processing power will go up okay, as time goes up to. Okay. Now, for the second uh, second question, which encryption algorithm is more secure, a publicly known algorithm or an in-house or private algorithm? So, Kirchhoff's principle, and this principle was... Um, published during the 18, eight, late 1800s, no? states that algorithms must be publicly known to ensure it is strong and secured. So there are um, two schools of thought uh, about um, this, no? but according to Kirchhoff, um, it has to be publicly known so that everyone can scrutinize its strength. So um, that's the... Um, that's Kirchhoff's principle. On the other hand, on the other hand, um, there are those who claim that if it's private, then it's secured. <laughs> okay, but according to Kirchhoff, um, Kirchhoff's principle, it gives this the the other the other party a false sense of security. In lesson one, we call it. Um, security through obscurity because you do not know um, you do not know if there is security at all because your standard is yourself so if it's private or an in-house algorithm then um, you might think it's strong when in fact when you use it already it might have been cracked a few seconds after launching it so, yeah. So um, let's now go to symmetric encryption. So for um, symmetric encryption, it uses one key to encrypt and decrypt. So if you would see um, this uh, image example, so there's um, an input. Okay, here's the input. Okay, there's a message. Okay, you you run it through the algorithm and then it will provide the ciphertext. Okay, so there, there's an algorithm and then there's the um, the key. Okay, and then you get the ciphertext and then when you have when you will decrypt it, when you want to decrypt it, you use the same key. Okay, you mix it with the algorithm again and then it will give it a plain text back. Okay, so that's simple, right? <clears throat> So, um, I skipped the types of um, symmetric algorithms. You can browse it through um, and read the other reference material. So, an example is DES, and then we have three DES, IDEA, AES, Blowfish, and Twofish, um, RC5, and RC6. So, for symmetric algorithms, again, I have to emphasize this again and again, that it only uses one key or shared key. Um, so, same key to encrypt and decrypt. Okay, so the second type of um, encryption algorithm is the asymm asymmetric encryption. It's also known as public key encryption or a two-key um, encryption. So, for this type of um, encryption algorithm, it uses two keys. So if you encrypt with one key, you may decrypt it with the other. So one key may be made public, it is called the public key. Okay. Um, and the one that you keep for yourself is called the private key. 
So, this is the example. No? So, there's a sender. Okay. Um, there's a plain text. Okay. Then you encrypt it with um, a public key. Okay. Then it becomes a ciphertext. Okay. Once the recipient receives it, he or she dec decrypts it with the private key. And then the recipient gets the plain text. So, <clears throat> Public keys are um, available publicly, so anybody can access the public key. Okay. So this resolves the problem of, um, let's say, if going back to symmetry, I only use one key. So if I'm going to send an email, how am I supposed to? Um, um, how how should the recipient be able to to open the the message that I sent if I'm only using one key, right? So if if I'm using a symmetric um, encryption, I will encrypt the message, send it to the recipient, and then how will the how will the recipient open it? So I I will have to send the same key. So it might defeat the purpose of um encrypting the message because on the fly it might be sniff okay it might be sent to an, uh, a wrong person etc so asymmetric encryption answers that problem okay. Okay, so some questions um, what are the factors that will yield to the product 49 million four hundred eighteen thousand five hundred twenty seven but we, we can create a program for that right okay <clears throat> and then what is this hundreds thousands million billion uh, trillion so 35 trillion 184 billion 372 million 88,832 is e to power what Okay, so um, these questions um, are very hard to answer without a calculator. <laughs> um, but these are what we call asymmetric methods. Okay, so this, these are methods that use what we call one-way function. It's easy to compute one way, but it's difficult to reverse back. <clears throat> So, for example, factoring prime numbers. So, think of a very large um, prime number. So, what's a prime number? It's a number whose factors are one in itself. So, think of um, two large prime numbers, multiply it together, it becomes a composite. Okay. Now, assuming you don't know the, the factors, you're given a composite, composite number. Okay. Now, you're tasked to get the factors. It's hard. Now imagine if that's a very very big prime number, okay. two very very big prime numbers, and then you combine it to become a composite one. Okay. <clears throat> and then the other one, the other um, one-way function is called the discrete logarithms. So it's the opposite of exponentiation. For example, it's easy to to do multiplication. Um, when we say what is 8 raised to 15, so at this this will yield to the answer 35 trillion 184 billion 372 million 88,832. Okay, but if you are now asked to do the other way, other way around to reverse it back, it is challenging. So that these are the methods used by um, asymmetric algorithms or uh, asymmetric encryption, encryption algorithms. So it's easy to compute one way, but difficult to reverse back. So let me just run through one type of um, symmetric encryption, okay, which is very popular, it's called RSA. Okay. And it starts with NED, where n is the product of two prime numbers. Again, it starts with um, prime numbers. We call it p and q. And this is 
published together with the public key. E is the public key, and then uh, it's less than and relatively prime to P minus 1 times Q minus 1. And then D is your private key, which is equal to E minus 1 modulo P minus 1 Q minus 1. So in, in the example, this is the usual example. So we start with P and Q. So we have P, which is 3, Q is 11. So these are both prime numbers. You get N, you multiply 3 um, times 11, you get 33. And then you compute for um, phi of um, N, which is P minus 1 times Q minus 1, which is 2 times 10 becomes 20. And then choose E such as 1 less than E, less than um, phi of N and E, and then R co-prime. So it means you have to choose um, a prime number between 1 and phi of N, which is 20. Okay, in this case, we choose 7. Okay, and then compute a value for D such as D times E, modulo phi of n is equal to 1. So one solution is d is equal to 3. Okay, so 3 times 7 is 21, modulo 20, the answer is 1. Okay. <clears throat> so you, you can, you can uh, look, look at this example again to review. Okay. <clears throat> so we already have um, the value. So we have the public key. Okay. E and N, so we have 7, 33, and then the private key is D, N, which is 3 and 33. So, so the encryption of M is equal to 2, M meaning um, the message, so we use the um public key which is seven so two raised to seven modulo thirty three which is your p times q it becomes twenty nine and then to decrypt it we use the ciphertext twenty nine raise three three is your private key modulo thirty three it becomes so this is um, a simple simulation of um, RSA. So um, let's try to have an example in asymmetric encryption. So we have two um, two people communicating. We have Arnel and Benji. Okay. <clears throat> so Arnel um, has a private key and public key, okay, represented by A K. Um, sub PR and then public key AK sub PU and then Benji also private key BK sub PR and public key BK sub PU. Okay, so the public key is um, available publicly <laughs> and um, can be accessed by anyone. The private key uh, is stored. With that person. So if Arnel wants to send an encrypted message that only Benji can open, what should he do? So Arnel will send a message, use um, Benji's public key, and then Benji will use his private key to open the message. Right, so use the public key to encrypt, and then the Benji can decrypt it using the private key, and that's the usual scenario. How about the other way around? If what is the purpose if Arnel encrypts his message using his private key? Okay. So it's the other way around. Arnel will um, encrypt the message using the private key. What is he trying to prove? So, 
it is now used for authentication purposes. Why is that? If Arnel will use his private key to send a message, it means anyone can open the message using the public key. Okay. So, um, what should we use? Symmetric or asymmetric? Okay. What are the things to consider when we say speed? Which is faster? Symmetric or asymmetric? Of course, it's symmetric because it only uses one key. Okay. For security, um, which is more secured, which are which provides more security uh, or better security, symmetric or asymmetric? So the answer is asymmetric because um, it uses two keys, right? For scalability, what should we use? Symmetric or asymmetric? So the answer is asymmetric because in asymmetric, every time that there's an, a, a person that uh, is added into the community, that person only needs to have two keys, right? Where, where um, comparing it to um, symmetric, we have to, like for example, me, uh, um, and I have 10 friends, I, I need to have the, the keys of these 10 friends to open the message. Okay. And then when another new person comes in, I need to get the key. So the, the more people that goes into the community, the more keys that I need to save. Okay. So in terms of scalability, asymmetric is better. Okay. And then we have what we call hash functions. So when we say hash function, it provides encryption using an algorithm and no key. So meaning to say, I have a message, I run, I run it to, to, to the algorithm, I get, um, I get a cipher text, and that's it. Okay. They are called one-way hash functions because because there is no way to reverse encryption. Okay. And what is the purpose of, of the hash, hash function? So, um, it does not provide confidentiality because you cannot decrypt it, right? But it provides what we call um, integrity okay? because it ensures that whatever the hash value is, that it's the, the message that you would like to send. Okay? That's why if you would notice, um hashes are used to store you know to encrypt passwords okay so when you open the password file the passwords are hash so it it's what we call the the, the fingerprint of the message so if a password is typed in again the password is hash and then it is compared to the list of passwords that are hashed as well and if it matches then it's correct okay so there. um these are the different types of hash algorithms of so md5 these are the more uh, popular ones we have sha1 and then we have haval okay so um this wraps up the um cryptography lesson for um, module 4. Uh, this is the um, condensed version. The complete version is found in the uh, Google Drive. So if you have any questions, you may um, send me an email or comment um, and I'll try to answer. Uh, thank you very much.